So my uh, title uh, includes or packs a certain uh, trans genre charge, a charge that is introduced in the name of the contemporary between contemporary philosophy and contemporary art. Contemporary art is deliberately foregrounded, but it's also conjoined with a contemporary philosophy which, make no mistake, serves to call into question a certain zeitgeisty contemporary art. An art becomes a cutting-edge trophy piece of the creative and still cultural industries. At the same time, this philosophy sizes up contemporary art as an input whose intensive definition it expects to precipitate a movement towards a diagrammatic critic of aesthetics. A movement that will then react back on a philosophy which the critic of aesthetics will cause to defer from itself by distancing it from the outset, from its usual approach to such artistic matters, namely that of aesthetics as philosophy of art. So, it's not so much a matter of producing a philosophy of contemporary art, as of lodging ourselves in between art and philosophy with the aim of introducing an oscillation, a supplementary pulsing between a philosophy, that is contemporary with contemporary art, and an art that is contemporary with contemporary philosophy. The contemporary scene in this doubled matter, divided in itself, is not a philosophical condition, let's face it, what could a contemporary art placed under condition of contemporary philosophy even mean? No, in a Deleuzean sense, it's a problem. A problem rendered yet more acute by the reciprocal problematization of the two terms now placed in chiasm so as to disrupt their categories and their received or affiliative disciplinary divisions. And indeed, the problem is most decidedly that of the contemporary, for the common notion of the contemporary, with its untenable a priori a posteriori, leaves no room for any differential critical temporality of and in art and philosophy. We must presume that the concept of the contemporary will remain hollow so long as it falls short of the political speculative construction, a monster, needless to say, that would determine its dramatization. And so long as it fails to grasp the extent to which it must be out of phase, with a zeitgeist that it tracks, a fractured zone of interference introduced into what George Agamben calls the inert homogeneity of linear time. Three consequences follow from this, consequences whose effects can and should, in principle, be distinguished in art and philosophy, but which, in fact, we find conjugated in the present performative of an art of the contemporary. First, and most immediate consequence, the contemporary only makes sense if it draws us into the operation of a critique of the identity of the present, the state of things and into a clinical relation to the alterities that bring forth a new eventuality, futurity, whose signs 
are stifled, beneath the historical form of presence and the omnipresence of actuality. A certain urgency and a certain absolute of thought are affirmed here in the figure of the untimely, in a political experimentation on the present that can only be carried through by a heterogeneous of thought that is fully engaged with real becomings that condition its emergence. The first, this first effectuation of the contemporary is noted together with the pragmatics of a thinking in act, at once transcategorial and transdisciplinary, two notions I share with my friend and colleague Peter Osborne. As Deleuze and Guattari say in the very last page of the chapter Art in what is philosophy, quote, every created element on a plane calls on other heterogeneous elements which are still to be created on other planes, end quote. All the while I had communicating on one and the same ontological plane of consistency always singularly grasped and modulated to construct a real to come on the basis of points of creation and the potentialization of the present. <coughs> this is of course uh, Matisse's uh, swimming pool in his uh, flat studio in Paris. Uh, Montparnasse. Uh, he wanted to offer the project yeah, to the city of Paris. Uh, it was in 1951, if I'm not uh, wrong, so really a few years before uh, Matisse's death, or Matisse's uh, death, and the city of Paris refused, and it has been remounted, reenacted, not exactly in a swimming pool. I think 15 years ago, after you know, this coin. Uh, let's say black hole. Here, the decorative finds its support in a vitalist thought, Bergsonian in spirit, Nietzschean in its flow, constructivist in its development, and pragmatist in its continuation, whence the employment, not so much generative as transformational, of Deleuzean philosophy in this book, um, um, uh, Kevin alluded to uh, La Pensée Matisse, the Matisse uh, thought. Let me show you some more. Let me show you very well <coughs> this work. Third and final. The consequence. The motif of the contemporary, strategically, strategically reinterpreted in this way, is determined in relation to a time that sets modernity into becoming. It must be analyzed from a twofold perspective genealogical and archaeological. Genealogical. The contemporary is informed by and sinks from the 60s and the total crisis of all models of determination. A crisis contemporary with the opening up of new fields of possibilities and of virtualities, which bring forth a social mutation on the world scale that in turn leads to the de-definition de of politics as a separate sphere of life. This separation is, in the last instance, related to the professional politics that had rooted the avant-garde, leaving them adrift between art as politics and political art. Such a contemporaneity can be summed up in the formula 68 did take place. And the site of this contemporaneity is biopolitical, 
because of the micro-political questions of subjectivation that it brings to the fore. Let's note that the de-definition of art to adopt Harold Rosenberg's famous expression and its prime motivation of dissolving art into life is itself contemporary with the de-definition of philosophy whose principle is preceded by Deleuze, precisely in 1968, when he writes, this is of course in difference and repetition, quote, that the time approaches when it will hardly be possible to write a book of philosophy as it has been done for so long. What particularly interests us here is the way in which he sets out the modalities of this impossibility. Quote, the search for new means of philosophical expression was begun by Nietzsche and must today be pursued in relation to the renewal of certain other arts. End of quote. So better to make it resonate with an anticipation whose look, elle a chaud au cul, uh, is splendidly the champion. Quote, in the history of philosophy, a commentary should act as a veritable double and bear the maximum modif modification appropriate to a double. One imagines a philosophically bared eagle, a philosophically clean-shaven Marx, in the same way as a moustached Mona Lisa. End quote. <clears throat> Beyond the properly Deleuzean sense of a difference and repetition of philosophy, this Duchampian collage incites us to pass to the archaeological claim so as to rewrite the modernity of a century that begins with a crisis of scientific foundations and continues with a, with a philosophical critique of representation that attacks all the formal and categorical dispositive that upheld its specific regimes of objective and or subjective identity. Who should we come across here but, once again, Duchamp, who, with his three standard uh, stoppages, Stoppage et talon, uh, original French, promptly goes overboard with his crisis, unleashing his amusing physics with four dimensional aspirations, and thus signifying a radical paradigm shift in the very idea of art. So, this is, I mean, uh, the original, let's say, Trois de Pagetalon, yeah. This is 1913, 1914, and this is the way, quite interestingly, uh, Duchamp rephrased, let's put it this way, uh, his three de Pagetalon into the ready-made story. Yeah. This is a new narrative, knowing too that the three de Pagetalon are the most substantial part, let's say, of the very heterogeneous, yeah, of the ready-made tool. <coughs> but anyway, and you have the final one with a box. Yeah. This is um, 35, 36, if I'm not wrong. This idea, the three stop pages, is now submitted to a triple stoppage of aesthetic standards and of the standard of the aesthetic. A good enough demonstration of how art as experiment, which Duchamp elevates to the status of, the, of a pseudo-experimental scientific protocol, is implicated no less than philosophy. Duchamp produced a laughable Bergson, for example, 
in the discovery and exploration of all the forces that act beneath and against the representation of the identical in the logic of recognition. <clears throat> Isn't it the case, then, as affirmed once again by Deleuze, that art and contemporary art, Deleuze cites pop art, and in particular, Henry Warhol, may even lead the way for philosophy when it challenges its formal identity, the art form, and the distribution of that identity into sub-genres, painting form, sculpture form, etc. When it propagates words whose nature is nothing else than problematic, and which do not sit well under the romantic and post-romantic, still aesthetic category of artist thought, la pensée artiste. With this in mind, the archaeological formula for the contemporary might be stated as follows. The 20th century did take place. And so we embark, beyond Deleuze Deleuze, upon a journey to an outside, which is also the outside of philosophy philosophy. Given that, quoting Deleuze, strictly speaking, something philosophers have never done, even when they were talking about politics, even when they were talking about taking a walk or fresh air, is to hook thought up directly and immediately to the outside. Thus, Deleuze, in the grip of what I call the Guattari effect, the Deleuze who writes these lines marked by the nomad thought of the thinker of the untimely Nietzsche course, Nietzsche nomad, and who going to the extreme point of his thought with Guattari, even states that the painter's model is the commodity. This is in the uh, Deleuze article on uh, uh, Fromanger. A statement which, of course, complicates somewhat the very notion of a direct and immediate connection to see outside. And this is the very first show, Andy Warhol show, in a gallery that he transformed in a kind of grocery, as you see. Uh, from Duchamp to Warhol, again, this is the famous Rose de la Vie perfumes. Question being, where is the rapture? Where is your rapture? The perspective of an archaeology of contemporary art we now have to affirm itself through a peculiar but entirely necessary displacement of the vision of the century of the avant-garde. If we are to work through the crisis of the idea of the image opened up by modern art, this is famous uh, servants, poses, one poses, by showing that the full effects of this crisis will be felt in the phenomenal discontinuity of contemporary art, it seems to me that for this crucial for this discontinuity is a break made by Matisse and Duchamp asymmetrically with the pictorial phenomenology of the aesthetic image. With this rupture, Matisse and Duchamp together will determine not so much the two foundational paradigms of contemporary art as its putting in tension. 
and not on the genealogical level of the practices through which it is constituted, but on the archaeological plane of the modes of construction of its auto problematization in the field of forces thereby created between a constructivist vitalism, that is to say, a vitalism that is processual and relational in the Matissean sense of a decorative constructivism and which brings painting out of itself, staging the defenestration of the painting form. This is Paysage à Coulure, 1905, the famous Fauvis summer, l'été fauve, the explosion at the Salon d'Automne. So, sorry, uh, a decorative constructivism uh, which brings painting out of itself, staging the defenestration of the painting form so as to exceed the contemplative world of the painting and to take possession of an environment that is already in excess of all site specificity in view of the forces of the outside that it mobilizes. Elsewhere, I quote, elsewhere as well as anywhere else, as Dominique Fourcade, who is uh, the editor of uh, Matisse Notes and Text, um, so as Dominique Fourcade suggests reluctantly, addressing the non art logic, his expression, the non art logic mobilized in Matisse's cut up gouache. Yeah. And this is uh, a panel, a wall, yeah, once more in uh, uh, Matisse uh, apartment uh, uh, studio in Paris, same thing, uh, Boulevard uh, Montparnasse. This is 53, 54, yeah. And for those who have seen, for example, the huge, amazing, extraordinary um, um, uh, show uh, as uh, uh, in London recently, yeah, where everything is beautifully framed, etc., etc. This is quite funny because if you look at the catalogue, these great art historians spend 200 pages, a catalogue of 400 pages, apologizing to say, yes, we're obliged to show this as real works, as work of art, as paintings. We have to frame them, and this is absolutely anti matician But we can't do it in another way. Yes. That's, that's right. So, uh, uh, on the one hand, this is what I call a, a constructivist uh, uh, vitalism. And two, uh, constructivism of the signifier, Duchamp, and you see here, fresh, fresh widow. Yeah. It is Duchamp who begins by reducing the art form to languages, games about art so as to subvert its aesthetic regime by cutting it off from the so-called plastic art through a ready-made reversal of the Bergsonian perspective of an in-the-making, le se faisant. Yeah. It's a very ready-made, le tout fin. Yeah. It's, a, it's a joke and a kind of war machine directed against confronting Bergson Sufizan in the making. Yeah. In the ready-made, le tout fait, this Bergsonian perspective finds itself captured by a signifier that is literalized insofar as it is phallically enlarged against the dialectic of the visible and the invisible that informs the desire for the image, a desire now exposed to the shop window of the department store. This is famous Duchamp's mannequin uh, at the first uh, surrealist exhibition uh, in Paris. Uh, this is once more, of course, uh, Rose Selavi's perfume, 
and this is of course the large glass which is the very first let's say shop window you know <coughs> or more exactly yeah uh, the first shop window separating the bride from the naturalist a coit à travers la glace through the window yeah, as you can read it in Duchamp's notes uh, 1930. The outside passes into the vitrine of the commodity become absolute. Fresh widow. Fallen back on the sharp window that reflects the gaze like a mirror, it reads the onanism of sharp windows. Widow. The window perspective of painting is rendered <coughs> blind for and by the voyeur consumer who must, according to the Duchampion ID, reflect the whole production, circulation, consumption, consummation cycle of art on the shorter circuits that stands for the short <coughs> circuiting of aesthetic masturbation. Duchamp's quote, confronted to the real subsumption of the world and of sublimation and of the sublime. But the great reinvention of Duchamp in 1960s confirms in its turn the dangers of any continuities projection of and in contemporary art, calling to mind that uh, the Foucauldian warning that it is, quote, practices that systematically form the objects of which they speak, end quote. It is far from irrelevant that this reformating, the contemporary reformating of Duchamp, participates in the deconstruction of the artistic field in political terms exacerbated by the institutionalization of the historical avant-garde, the most ready-made configuration of this extreme modernity included, which means Duchamp, an institutionalization that could equally become the determinative factor of an institutional critique avant la lettre of the Duchamp myth and of a post-conceptual sublation of the Matissean lineage. The real importance of Daniel Buren perhaps resides in the fact that he conjugates this double modality. Yeah, this is, of course, the Buren is just in front yeah, of um, uh, um, the Matisse dancers at the Musée d'Art Moderne uh, in Paris. What we are dealing with here is a radical after Matisse that emerges from an inevitable after Duchamp, as is confirmed by a highly experimental reprise of the question of architecture as social signifier that emerges at this very point. That's a few interesting grand work. Uh, this is, is, is anti-retrospective, the music that didn't exist uh, the museum that didn't exist uh, in Beaubourg in 2002, and this is from the same show where he invested the whole Beaubourg and properly derailed the whole Beaubourg as the new post-68 museum paradigm. This was, this was his point, it was quite, really quite well done. It will determine both the special ontology of contemporary art and the ontological reopening of art as transcategorial question that carries with it a post or transmedia effect, for example, in the work of Elio Ortizica. This is famous uh, Tropicania that has been shown for the first time. I think 67 or 68 uh, in uh, London uh, at the White um, Chapel. And above, above all, that of Gordon Matter Clark, 
in regard to the question of site, non-site. Matter Clark, uh, photo montage. Uh, this is clinical intersect, perhaps you know the whole story uh, that uh, Gordon Letta Clark did in a building that was going to be destroyed quite in front of Boubou. So it's quite interesting because, of course, it was like a periscope or a bazooka yeah, directed yeah, <coughs> against property, against Boubou. At the beginning, Letta Clark proposed to the people in, in Bobur with the old post 68 discourse to do it in Bobur before they were finishing to building it. Of course, they said, no, no way, you're not going to do this here now. <laughs> so he found this house which was going to be demolished, and that was his whole point, of course, yeah, and did the, the intersection with Bobur, yeah, with the new museum, the new post 68 uh, museum. This is a board plate. This is what it does inside, not inside. Um, stuff. As if it is a problematizing exposition of the site in the negotiation of the risky passage from the living plenitude of aesthetic experience, art as experience, according to the epochal title of John Dewey's book, to art as extra or non-aesthetic experimentation that determines the contemporary orientation of art in regard to the critical and clinical assessment of the semi-material organization of present time. Pop would have been an essential component of this passage precisely because of how it breaks with any kind of participative aesthetics. I have no time to comment this. Uh, but of course, this is Kaprov, you know, multiple manifesto. This is the reference to Pollock, sees the one, yeah, remembers the one. <coughs> Kaprov is literally extracting the very idea of happenings, events, etc., from his beautiful critique of uh, um, uh, Pollock in his text, uh, uh, The Legacy of Jackson Pollock. Yeah, where he wants to stay with the idea of the ritual. And of course, what is Pollard? If not, Ernst Nemut films and photographies. Yeah, we, we can't dissociate, yeah, let's say, Pollard's painting from this kind of scenographic mythology. Yeah, and this is, of course, what Kaprov understood perfectly well. Yeah? <clears throat> so we can't dissociate both. But here comes Mr. Handy Warhol, and he properly diagrammatized, and even at this point, schematized yeah, the whole mythology of the participative ritual through the dance paradigm. Yeah. And here things become more difficult, and I do think more interesting. <clears throat> But we must now specify the most important characteristic of this discontinuity that deploys itself as a disjunctive synthesis of contemporary art. I have summarized it in the idea of a diagrammatic regime or agency or agencement, not to say assemblage, to distinguish from it from the aesthetic regime of art. And from the formal analysis that underwrites this regime's constitutive and, for me, far too generic indetermination. In Jacques Rancière's definition, the aesthetic is a historical transcendental moment of total revolution that belongs to these, quote, new forms of visibility and intelligibility, end quote, which never define any specific content and can therefore extend to infinity the domain of the condition of possibility in a superior poetic of metaphor, Rancière's expression. Images and statements are indefinitely referred one to the other 
in an incessant relation of non-relation, the relation of a non-relation. And this is all animated by a paradoxical poetics which binds together with the tourniquet of its metaphors the aesthetic regime that it surreptitiously so, so drives forward. Now, this name diagrammatic, synonymous with an undoing of the image of the aesthetic regime of art, is first of all a password and a passage word. That is, it must be understood in terms of the use that it's made of it. Let's remember, no problem of meaning, but only of usage. Don't you did, don't you did. So doing so in passing from conditions of possibility, a free play of form, signs, and image phrases to Rancière's key expressions, to reality conditions, those of signs, forces, it is in this first sense that the diagram can be mobilized as a prop head of a contemporary thought art, which, as we all realize, is no more that of yesterday than that of a bel aujourd'hui, encompassing everything that happens within it. Which means a really selective construction of the very notion of contemporary and critical one, of course. On this point, we should recall that the logic of the aesthetic position so profoundly redefined by Ancien in a post kantianism which Bache Schiller has recovered its metapolitical, its metapolitical, metapolitical horizon, throwing into turmoil the most firmly established divisions of the sensible and intelligible, was deployed, quote Ancien, from the end of 18th century, from the end of 18th century. A foundational rupture with the representational and hierarchical order of the arts, the aesthetic is a question of an open reconfiguration of experience which isolates that which is singular to art. The counter history of artistic modernity can then be written upstream of Greenbergian purification by plunging it back into the long durée of the play of autonomy and of uh, heteronomy, quoting Ancien, synchronic with all the vibrations of universal life, unquote. Without the question of the contemporary and of contemporary art ever emerging as a problem, but doesn't exactly the same happen in Alain Badiou's inversed yet symmetrical in aesthetics? Badiou provides an account of the saturation of all the schemas followed by the arts of the 20th century in various syntheses that survive the death of the avant-garde only in the degraded contemporary form of what he calls a romantic formalism. The affirmationist sublation, affirmationist manifesto, the affirmationist sublation proposed by Badiou is then able to tailor to its own requirements the set target of a contemporary art subject to maxims, that is to say prescriptions, in the form of the requisitioning of an artistic will, quoting uh, Badiou himself, that must be quote, reinstated in its incorporeal rigor, unquote. And this in order to subtract form, idos, from the romanticism of expressivity that fuels the multimedia motif of a multisensorial art, etc., etc. Accordingly, it will not hesitate to denounce the Deleuzean conception of art for having reduced it to the romantic incarnation of the infinite into the finite. In fact, Badiou, this is in the century, Le Siècle, prosecutes this critique of the romantic sacralization of the artwork and the artist in the name of an entirely secularized conception of the infinite that supposedly conjoins all the great raptures 
of modern contemporary art, from the critique of the painting form to the ready-made and minimal art, we have to say. The logic of this position can be summed up by his notion of experimental formalization, his expression, of course. The infinite is no longer captured in form. It passes <coughs> through finite form which, taken in the animation of its act, is the infinite of which art is capable in the multiplicity of its formalizations. In this way, the sensible form of the ID is reversed out into an ID of form as an act of formalization of the sensible in the event of the ID. Form is no longer the classical forming of a matter, of the apparent organicity of the work, of its self-evidence as totality, etc. It conforms to the act of the dematerialization of the sensible that formalizes the ID, capital, as this qualitative infinity, affirming, uh, affirming what Hegel called the pure quality of the finite itself, and which is like the subjective ground of the essential form of the art work. The Badusian ontology of art thus pushes form in its last contemporary retrenchment and in contemporary art onto the side of an experimental formalization which maintains, rather classically, that the quote, the essence of thought always resides in the power of forms, unquote. Now, the diagram or experimental diagrammatization is a rigorous alternative to this movement at the very level of that which the artistic act uprise in terms of new thought. An alternative, first of all, insofar as it exceeds through a multiplicative becoming of forces, the trick of the vanishing of form into the act of formalization, modernism as such. Yeah. A new thought, a contemporary thinking of art as a capturing of forces, which, if we want to do more than just pay it lip service, obliges us to affirm quantity, a quantitative infinity <coughs> and relation, the process and the operations of a putting into relation rather than the act through which the Platonism of the same is modernized in the form of art. It happens that it was Matisse who first drew attention to this quantitative um, relation in the revolution of Fauvism. For if Every force is a relation of forces and has no being other than that of relation of forces, immanence, then the construction, an always singular construction, of a diagram of forces acts transversely at the point it connects as it mobilizes relatively free or unlinked points, points of creativity of mutation of resistance in a distribution of singularities that really finds force as an affect for every force as a power to affect other forces with which it is in relation and to be affected by yet others. Against the two truth procedures of art and politics which Badiou sequesters from each other the whole micro-political micro conception of the real is presaged in this Deleuzean proposition, whose montage and context we must briefly delineate. <coughs> Richard Hamilton. The work with Guattari, before the more important development of A Thousand Plateaus, 
will already be a guiding force for Deleuze when he first uses the term diagram in a 1975 article dedicated to discipline and punish, Foucault's discipline and punish, which stands on uh, Foucault's ethics, very unique apparition yeah, uh, of the term, qualifying the panopticon as Quote, a diagram of a mechanism of power reduced to its ideal form. This is Foucault's original version. Deleuze strikes out the ideal form, replacing it with a principle of quote, an abstract machine coextensive with all social field, end quote, which seals the difference in nature between micro and macro, but not without it being immediately affected by a double direction or by two opposed states. The diagram of power governed by the principle of the integration of forces, which is a plan of organization linked to the state, while more regulator of the micro elements of the diagram, and the diagram of lines of flight, in the fuite I do prefer, linked to a war machine animating the collective field of imminence. It is as a function of this double instantiation that Deleuze opposes to the Foucauldian dispositive of power the conception of a desiring agency assemblage, agencement de désir, elaborated together with Guattari. This assemblage or agency agencement affirms the primacy of desire, which in consequence is always assembled, agenced, agencé, a desiring constructivism. And it affirms the primacy of line of flight, I do prefer the left psychedelic French, and once more, ligne de fuite, from power whose dispositive, as abstract as a may are always lines of retroactualization on the horizon of a capitalism that seasonally records and axiomatizes with one hand what he has deterioralized with the other. Called forth by this Copernican revolution in desire, power, desire on Deleuze, Deleuze, Guattari, side and power, was one, the micro-political function of experimental detailization for which art becomes the or a laboratory as it brings ideas back to the most material relation of forces is confirmed by the argument set out by Deleuze, quote, if the dispositive of power are said to be in some way constitutive, only, only phenomena of resistance could possibly come to them. Instead of which, one affirms the existence of phenomena of creation that pass by way of a sinking become war machine, and not in a metaphorical way. Yeah? A machine of absolute positive deterioralization defined by a digranatism whose regime Deleuze anticipates once more in his article on Foucault, quote, the diagram never functions to represent an objective world. On the contrary, it organizes a new type of reality. The <coughs> diagram is not a science. It is always a political matter, undoing existing realities and significations, constituting so many points of emergent or of creationism, unexpected conjunctions, improbable continuum. It doubles history with a becoming, he concludes, through the mapping of forces or intensities that it carries out. It is an intensive map. Here, the diagram itself is submitted to a deterioralization that detaches it from its usual scientific usage so that it can participate in a cartographic art indissociable from a distribution of affects that subjectivate the whole process by qualifying it as desiring. 
although this extracts the principle of a diagrammatic thought from the conception of the diagram as a schematism by extending its Foucauldian usage to the point at which its whole logic is reversed, this deteriorizing operation must still be inscribed within the exercise of the diagram that fuses, per se, in its very etymology of drawing writing, a space of visibility and a field of legibility. It therefore goes well beyond an experimental formalism that is just an abstract co-adaptation between form of expression and form of content. For it is, quote, the diagram that retains the most deteriorated content and the most deteriorated expression in order to conjugate them. Maximum deteriorization sometimes starts from a trait of content and sometimes from a trait of expression. The trait is said to be deteriorizing in relation to the other precisely because it diagrams it, carries it off, raises it to its own power." Unquote. What is at stake here are the real virtualities of a revolutionary diagram from which flows both a new thing and a new doing under conditions which will display the relations between forces which constitute power. As a very movement, when they reached, quote, unformed and unorganized matter and unformalized functions, quote, and consequently address the informal element of forces in which the visible and the invisible alike are emerged. For it is by way of this relation of forces between content and expression that is determined the stabilization of relation of deteriorization from the point of view of their formalization and that of formations of power, stratification, or, on the contrary, the building of a machine of intensive deteriorization that is carried along on flows of sites, involving them in processes of diagrammatic conjunction engaged with material fluxes of all kinds in which they work always more, in one and the other alike as it reads in a thousand plateaus before being there is politics. Politics does not follow on afterwards. Diagram is thus an end and the process that leads to this proposition which puts to work in being generative practices of heterogeneity and complexity. Sign, signs work flush to material flows. Such is what I am lemma that launched the constructivism of desire and of diagram itself you know, from the late uh, 60s. It is correlative to the ontological political deteriorization of the sign and of the image in the machining of the diagram and of its function as a shifter and embrayeur in a dimension of processual creativity that is less and less inclined to recognize itself in the aesthetic, inesthetic formalities of art. The archivist aestheticization of conceptual art and its commodification confirms the tendency and relates ultimately to the necessarily critical side of the notion of the post-conceptual. Thus, Buttery's guiding formula also marks the, putti, the putting back into play of the contemporary and of art as experimentation in the trajectory of a thinking, Deleuze's thinking. The latter truly thought only when it was forced by the problematic intrusion of a sign that stripped it off representation into a Copernican revolution of subject and object. But it is Bataillon synesthesia that drives a real transition, a transition from an artist thought that takes up the revolution of abstraction in painting as model of a thought without image, summoning 
the groundlessness of forces within it to rise up into forms to a micro-political thought that determines itself in the generalized decoding and desretalization of the material fluxes and signs that define nothing else than the capitalist field of immanence. The coextensivity of the social field with the desire that defines it will now de-define it in an art become minor, art mineur. This means that to orient itself in the present, in thought, is to redefine oneself between capitalism and schizophrenia, to take up the unique title of Deleuze Guattarian thought and the site where the diagrammatic thought emerges. Doesn't the thought have in common with schizophrenia or the schizophrenic process? It's an experimentation with decoded and digitalized fluxes which it submits to desiring production as it crosses, as it crosses all the limits of a social production. It is the absolute condition for making thought a war machine, faire de la pensée une machine de guerre. And I conclude here. We not go to the end. Very quickly now, I'd like to suggest that, as should be obvious at this point, we can place the diagrammatic implication of the Guattarian or Guattaro Deleuzean thought on its most politically acute plane of insistence only if the diagram beyond the later and the intention of those inspired machinists is explained and complicated by secreting within the end that links capitalism and schizophrenia, identity in nature, difference of regime, the constitutive possibility of an ontology of contemporary art qua cartography art of our present, whence also its ability to retroitalize upon the cutting edge capitalism of the creative industries, of course. Access to this ontology will be governed by the always singular operatory sense of the diagram <coughs> placed in variation across its diverse montages. Maybe the only thing the latter have in common is their affirmation from this reconfigured contemporary perspective of art as a real abstract machine that forces the infinity of possibles to proceed directly from the finite. But this only confirms the identity of eternity, not so much problematic as problematizing, of a diagram which, from Pierce onward, engages with reality of the possible only by attaining the virtualities of a thought experiment. However, since it is a matter of a thought experiment that thinks through art, we must always singularize, singularize the reality conditions of its functioning in a matter flux as deteritalized and semiotized as it might be. The contemporary side of this matter flux cannot be theoretically analyzed without giving rise to the exploration of the setting into being immanent to artworks. And this is, and this, at the very level of the most conceptual exigencies of a contemporary thought that fuels the interrogation of the very notion of the artwork. So, diagrams may bear the proper names of artists, but they designate operation and effects rather than persons and subjects. As a method for the remontage of contemporary art, this involves a whole pragmatics indissociable from the politics of experimentation brought into play by those science forces that attack the strata so as to make something unprecedented take flight and to make pass within it the aesthetic form of art which it endows constantly by forcing it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry.
بس 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 Thank you so much, Eric, for this brilliant exposition, and, and I think you know, giving real sense to the diagrammatic and its contemporary urgency. Uh, and um, we've got about ten minutes for some questions, and I think it'd be really great if we give Eric a chance to talk about Neto a bit more. Yes. No, no, it's just because there are some Brazilians in these plants. I do. Questions from Brazilians. <laughs> Um, is there a question at the back? Mm -hmm. Yes. Almost right away, I was impressed by this subversive thought. Mm -hmm. Can one have an uncontemporary definition or a deeper definition of the I think that we should interrupt the mic. Everybody is. Can one have a data definition of the contemporary? As I was uh, watching the examples, uh, Duchamp, Matisse, etc., the immediate reaction I had, this is not my version of the contemporary. That's the 20th century, that's Paris. And I was thinking that I would personally need a very different notion of contemporary, which is not dated in terms of time but some sort of engagement with the present. And I would say that for me, or contemporary, is really a, 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 an absolute necessity, a requirement to ask what are the conditions of possibility for doing what we are doing. So if I look at, uh, if I were looking at examples of contemporary art, they would not come from the same date. For example, Godard's last film, which would be the latest in terms of chronology, which destroys the possibility, dismantles the apparatus of the cinema in the cinema. At the same time, something like Stellan's poetry, 50 years ago, uh, uh, opening with the line, the world is gone, the world is forth. Um, isn't that the contemporary as a definition requires a certain engagement with the contemporary of one's own time? And that could be 16th century, 19th century, and yesterday. Okay, this is obviously my, my, my thought, but you, you quite missed my point. Uh, the question was, was very exactly yeah, to, to develop, let's say, uh, a constructivist approach yeah, of the contemporary, which means the contemporary is not given. Yeah? This is a kind of, of operation that you have constantly yeah, to, to redo somehow. Yeah? So what, what I did is that I tried a bit yeah, to represent and to recontextualize my own work. That's why I was talking about the genealogical and the archaeological. Yeah? And, and, and the whole point was exactly to show, and I think that I said this with, with all the words, that effectively, if you see, for example, and it was a kind of privileged example because of the work that I was showing, yeah? if you see the kind of reconfiguration, which means reformatation yeah, of Duchamp yeah? in the 60s, it's a total recreation. And this is where I was quoting Foucault's about the question of practice, which means it is a practice with, let's say, it's political overdetermination, which is literally, constantly creating the proper objects. 
Yeah. So this was this was a bit my 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 point. Yeah. Exactly the way to break. Yeah. With let's say the history of art, included in its most sophisticated version. Yeah. So we don't we don't disagree at all. The real question is that, and I apologize for this. I I, I imagine that I could that I could do the whole presentation in one hour, let's put it this way, and including coming back to nature, putting the question of the diagram to work and showing something quite essential. And it was just my, my, my last point, but I think it's a way to properly answer to your very question. So, okay, I mean, Neto does, I have no time to analyze it, and that's not the point. This amazing, amazing, amazing work, yeah, uh, at the Panthéon, etc. And okay, that's fine, and I do analyze this critically, clinically, everything you want. And then he represented a part of it, yeah, where you see his place at Bilbao, at the new Guggenheim Bilbao, and we all know what represents Guggenheim Bilbao. It's of course, yeah, the new paradigm of, let's say, the most contemporary museum, uh, which means too that, uh, uh, and you see it, it's, 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 it means Neto is absolutely unable yeah, to address the question of Guggenheim Bilbao when he has been able absolutely to deconstruct and to put to work in a crazy way all the semiotic material elements of the very Pantheon. Yeah? And uh, simply, it, it, it doesn't work at all anymore. Yeah, when of course Guggenheim Bilbao is transforming Bilbao into a kind of Gotham city, as you see it. And my question, my final question, where where is the Batman? Batman, we have lost Batman. Yeah? Okay, that's all. So just just to answer properly to your question about the final thought, we have lost Batman. Okay, we have time for one or two more questions. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, if I, it's perhaps a, just inspired by our last remarks, and uh, if I take, if I try and draw the conse the political consequences of, of your talk, uh, you just tell me if I'm right. Um, would that mean that your discourse is an appeal to artists um, to exhibit works of art outside art institutions? Uh, which is, it, can it can it be taken as a political critique? Of, because I was also struck by the the remark you remarks you said you said about um, about uh, the Pompidou Center and uh, Gordon Matter Clark's installations in in front of that. Uh, so perhaps you could I would be curious about your elaboration on on this very institutional critique uh, and and the political relevance of that uh, in in artistic practices, particularly when talking about those giants in art history uh, that you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, thank you. Thank you for the, for the question. Uh, no, I mean, my, my, my position is quite, is quite simple. I mean, if we, if we don't want uh, to live in a kind of, 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 of cartoon, yeah, uh, there, is, there is no outside, okay, so it means there, there is no outside to the art institution, etc., etc. You just have to address it properly. Yeah, with all the possible, including yeah, violence. Yeah, that's the point. I mean, God and Mother Clark. This was an amazing, amazing, violent intervention with regard to Bobur, with an amazing understanding in real time. And it's possible, including, to, to understand it if you see uh, God and Mother Clark trajectory in New York, etc., etc. An amazing understanding of what was going on, what was Bobur, not only Bobur with regard to the emerging art world, etc., but what was Bobur for the city of Paris, for the metropole, uh, for uh, countries like uh, France, etc., etc. It, it was really something. Yes, exactly. So there was no, I mean, there is, there is no way to find to find an, an, an exit. That's the point with, with institutional critique, and it's quite interesting because Guattari, as you know, beautifully, yeah, with the so-called psychotherapy institutionnelle, institutional psychotherapy, 
really theorize in an amazingly interesting way, which has to be, I think, re-articulated, because this has never been properly made, with Foucault's contemporary work, yeah? which means how, how do you work with the question of the institution? Yeah? And, and this is where, for example, Guattari's critique of uh, uh, Anglo-English, after all, uh, anti-psychiatry, is extraordinarily interesting. Yeah? Because the old mythology, yeah, and the, I think the pseudo radicality of anti psychiatry, which was an amazing movement, and etc., etc., and all our respect, and so on, and so on, but was exactly to have the mythology of the pure absolute outside. The name of it was, of course, the madness. Yeah? Okay, so that, that was the point. So, no, so the question is not to, to find any kind of outside, but just to produce very critical uh, intervention, which effectively changes properly something, which, which displays yeah, the question of power and the kind of domination we are submitted to. I mean, we have no more time to play anything else. Yeah, there, is, there is no choice. What do you want to do? Yeah. You, you, you just have to be sharp and, and clever and, and radical. I mean, and neoliberalism means an absolute, total, world, civil war. This is where we are living. We can't, you know, play some kind of intellectual or whatever. This is where we are. It's not a joke, sadly. And I mean, if contemporary art doesn't address this kind of question, like, contemporary art can go to hell. Simply. Let's let abandon it. There's a very small <clears throat> awareness of power, political power relations in contemporary art. Generally, as far as I yeah. Okay. So. I think uh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to call a slightly brutal cut, Eric. I know there's, there are more Sorry, questions, but um, maybe you can save them until the end. So, uh, can we all thank Eric for the brilliant.